In this video, we will be introduced to summations. So when we have a summation, we use something called sigma notation in order to show that summation. So this symbol is sigma, and so that's what I'm looking at is sigma notation. And essentially it tells us to take the sum of values and I here is just an index. And so the index just tells us which term in the sequence are we looking at. The M is the lower bound. And so we're saying start at M. And the N is the upper bound. So continue adding those values until you get to the value um, that has the upper bound as the index. So notice I could write it this way where I've got the i equals m on the bottom and n on the top. You might also see it with those same values out front. And you can use i for index, you can use j for the index, sometimes you'll see k as the index, etc. Or you might actually see it written like this, not quite as often, but again it's just a sleeker way of writing it and saying that i goes from m to n. And again, all that means, that sigma notation tells us that we're going to start at m, so I'm going to take a sub m, whatever that number is, so that would actually be a number. I would start here and I would keep increasing by 1 until I got to n. So a uh, sub m, I would increase that by 1, which would be a sub m plus 1. I would keep increasing it, a sub m plus 2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until I got to a sub n. So whatever that number is, that is the end of the numbers. And then I would actually find what that result is. And that result would be the summation. So let's use sigma notation to express the sum of the first 100 terms of the sequence a sub i, where a sub i is found by 1 divided by i. And i starts at 1, 2, etc. So if I were just listing these, it would be 1 over 1, plus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 3, plus 1 over 4, etc., etc. What I want to know is how can I express this in sigma notation? So we have our sigma, and we say that i is going to go from 1, because 1 is the starting point, and we're doing the first 100 terms, so the upper bound would be 100, because we know if I continued this, then I would get to 1 over 99, 1 over 100, etc. And so the way that I would write this is then I would write 1 over i, and so that's exactly what it's telling me to do, is to then start with 1, so 1 over 1, go to 2, etc., and keep adding until you get to the upper bound of 100. So my sigma notation would look just like this. So let's look at a few more examples where we're actually asked to find the value. So in this case, we are actually looking for finding the summation rather than being able to write a series in a summation. We're going backwards. We're saying here's the series, find the summation. So this one starts from, this goes from i equals 5 through 9 of i squared. And so I can look at that summation from i equals 5 through 9 to be starting at 5, so we're taking 5 squared, continue to 6, to 7, to 8, to 9. And then right now we don't have any tricks or shortcuts or anything, and so I would actually just compute 25 plus 36 plus 49 plus 64, plus 81, and find what that sum is, which is 255. So in our next video, we're going to look at some shortcuts or some of the summation formulas that you might see. But let's go ahead and look at our second example. What is the value of 
um, from i equals 7 through 10 of negative 1 to the i. So the summation as i goes from 7 to 10 of negative 1 to the i, and I should have put the i squared up here. I apologize, I overlooked that. So here I would be saying 7, sorry, negative 1 to the 7th plus negative 1 to the 8th plus negative 1 to the 9th plus negative 1 to the 10th. So negative 1 to the 7th, we know that if we have an odd number of negatives, the answer is negative. So it's just negative 1 seven times. Here I have negative 1 to the 8th, so that's negative 1 eight times makes a positive 1. Negative 1 to the 9th gives me a negative 1 because it's an odd number of negatives. And negative 1 to the 10th gives me a positive 1 because it's an even number of negatives. And if I add those up, I get a summation of 0.